thing. He's wearing a T-shirt that says women go back in the kitchen. Well, like, what are we doing? Like, like <laughs> that's not, well, we haven't even touched on that. That's hatred of 40 years ago. We kind of got past that. And now we're just rehashing it because there has been a change. So this guy's a little bit bothered on the things that Strickland has said at Media Day, and I pulled up this article and I saw that it says ESPN challenged to speak out after UFC star Sean Strickland's anti-LGBTQ rant. It's never been this vile video. So let's do a live reaction and see what this show had to say and whether they have a point. Should Dana be stopped or should Dana be ridiculed by ESPN? Should they kind of pull him to the side and say, hey, you know what? Your fighters are going too crazy. They're saying things that we never hear in other sports because let's be honest, any other sport wouldn't allow Sean Strickland to talk the way that he does, right? But it is nice that at least one sport, that being MMA, UFC, fighters could say whatever they want. It is a little bit, I wouldn't even call it dangerous. It is a little bit, I guess, intimidating for fans that don't agree with certain fighters or fans might be a little bit worried that, you know, it gets out of hand and I could see why they feel that way. But at the same time, in any other sport, these players, basketball, football, baseball, list goes on, they can't really say how they feel, right? Because they'll get fined if they say something out of line. But at least in MMA, at least in the UFC, it's different. But there are people that have a problem with it. So let's get right to it. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy is a f enemy. Uh, you want to look at the enemy to our world it's that mother right there so if you guys remember that's the clip that was played before about sean strickland going crazy at media day saying whatever he felt was on his mind and you see the infamous shirt let's see how dan levitard and company feels about all this well obviously it needs to be denounced obviously it's appalling but in that audience stu got that's being trafficked in now i'm not saying it's true of everyone in that audience but the leader in that sport allows that. The leader in that sport. Pro and that leader being Dana White, he allows it, right? Where um, he hasn't filtered anyone as of yet. The only filtering that I've seen as far as maybe freedom of, you can maybe call it speech, was fighters at one point in time, they couldn't wear certain flags or couldn't put on their flag while walking into the octagon at all. That was like the only thing that I remember seeing being filtered. Now, are they filtered in other ways where they can't even wear whatever clothes they want or custom attire as they walk into the octagon? You know, they have to wear Reebok and they're filtered in other ways as far as what they promote, yes. But as far as speech-wise and what they want to say, fighters could say essentially what they want. And that's because Dana White allows it and the company in general. Hides himself on everyone can say what they want. There will be no punishments here. And if there are no punishments here, as there would be anywhere else in legitimized sport any other sport you say anything almost semi-controversial you're getting a $25,000 fine $50,000 fine you could even get suspended so you have to be very careful with your words now as far as the UFC fighters can say whatever they want and it kind of gives us an ability to see how fighters genuinely feel about certain politics or certain ideas or philosophies where you can't see that in basketball especially right or in football or in baseball then Without consequences, you're just allowing the precedent of that continuing. And my guess is, Tony, you can speak to this. My guess is that Dana White will only be upset that he that he went near the Bud Light stuff, that that's the only place. Bud Light being a sponsor of the UFC, maybe Dana White is perhaps a bit upset that Sean Strickland brings up Bud Light again in a negative tone. I don't know if that's a fair judgment of Dana White. I mean, I can see him kind of saying, you know what, if that's what Sean Strickland wants to say, to be fair, I could see Dana White being that unbiased or I could see him saying, you know what, although I disagree with Sean Strickland and that's one of our sponsors, Sean Strickland could say whatever he wants. I, I don't know if Dana White is saying something behind the scenes to Sean Strickland or others. Place that he'll get bothered. Yeah, Sean Strickland has been using language like this for a long time. It's just he's always kind of been the guy who's 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th ranked, so you don't really hear from him. That's a very good point as well, too. Sorry that I'm blocking this guy's face in the moment. Uh, maybe I'll move my camera in a bit. But, yes, this guy makes a great point that Sean Strickland, he wasn't even supposed to be out of sign, and now he's champion. So now he's all over the headlines and the news and the media and interviews where he's voicing his opinion. And we've never seen, to be quite honest, anything like Sean Strickland. Kobe, at least, we know that he's playing somewhat of a character. He still says some vile things, some horrible things, right? The Leon dad thing was just a bit too far. 
but he did it anyways. There was no repercussions. Dana White said he didn't like that, but at the end of the day, he's not filtering anyone or stopping anyone from saying what they want. But this is the first time I think we get someone as brash as Sean Strickland. I think that's fair to say. All of a sudden, his ascendum, his ascension into superstardom with Busy beating Israel Adesanya has put him in the limelight where a lot of his words now are getting shown to people across multiple social medias. Like, Sean is a guy that speaks whatever is on his mind, as you can see. Like, this is some of the lighter stuff. And that's why I think people love him and others very badly hate him. But he does have a lot of fans and it's very polarizing. I said in my last video that there are some, there are many that say, I agree with Sean. We got to stand with Sean Strickland, with American flags, and just proud that Sean Strickland is voicing his opinion and talking about the whole child abuse thing or the LGBTQ community. And there's others that say, we hate this guy. He needs to be stopped. And it appears maybe that at least on this show, they're probably going to take that route. We'll see. Stuff, by the way, if you actually That's know the Sean, lighter stuff? Yes, that's one that's of the, the worst lighter. sound clips we've ever right. played yes, on this like, show. So there you go. I guess <laughs> this guy uh, to the left obviously hates what Sean Strickland said. And he says it's one of the worst sound clips. I mean, and this is crazy because, yes, that is one of the lighter things that Sean Strickland has said prior in the past. In, in a press conference with Drikas Duplessis, who he's fighting this Saturday, which is basically the only fight on the card that matters, Dan, I think that's an important um, distinction here because nobody else on that card is really going to buy pay-per-views. People are not going to want to see them. Move myself just for a second. So Sean Strickland might be the only reason. He might have a fair point, another one, that... If it's not for Sean, this car doesn't sell. Listen, if you're watching right now, you might hate Sean Strickland as well, too. You might love him, but let's be honest. Could be true that if it weren't for Sean Strickland, people wouldn't be watching. I think Drickus has massive fans. But besides those two fighters, we got Raquel Pennington, Myra Bueno Silva. We have Mike Malat, who's from Canada. So he's probably drawing a decent crowd. But this card probably doesn't sell near as well or well at all if it's not for Sean Strickland. And Sean Strickland is why you're buying this fight. So... When you have Sean Strickland going up there and talking, yeah, they're going to kind of give him carte blanche because they need to sell this fight. And I think we're going to get some heated discussion here in a bit. That, that interesting of a topic to me. Like, How does Dana White allow this? We, we know where Dana White's politics reside. He's spoken articulately, honestly. On He says he's really good friends with Trump, so I guess it's fair to say you know where he stands. On why he allows this up. The fact that we played that clip, which I agree, Chris, that's... As hateful a clip as I've heard on this show. And I, I was aware of it. And I, I saw quotes of it. I wasn't prepared for how I would feel after seeing two minutes of it. Fuck that guy. So here, guys, I guess we have a man that's not so much of a fan of Sean Strickland. I think it's pretty clear. He's a stupid motherfucker who is hateful. And the fact that he's not suspended, where he'd be suspended in any other sport, hell, forget sport, in most companies. That shit would, at the very least, get you suspended. Should that happen, though? I know this guy's a little bit bothered. Perhaps you could even say a little bit emotional about the situation. But uh, it almost seems like, at least so far, he's basically saying, anywhere else, you'll get suspended. And maybe it's a problem that in the UFC that doesn't happen, especially the UFC being under the ESPN banner as far as the pay-per-view and where they play the fight. So... It seems like this guy wants some repercussions. Is an indictment on that company. It's publicly traded, by, by the way. So Endeavor and TKO, you should answer for this in ways that he hasn't had to. How should they answer, though, would be my question to this guy that's very serious, as you can see. Um, but how should they answer? How should they answer? The whole motto is you can say what you want. You can believe whatever you want. You're just here to fight at the end of the day. I think that carried the UFC to the heights that is at today, right? When the pandemic happened and they kept rolling and they and they kept doing business, I thought it was good for the company. And they kind of have that, listen, here you say what you want, you do what you want. As long as you fight, we're okay. And, and this guy clearly wants something to change in the UFC. Now, before we continue, guys, let me know in the comments, should there be something done as far as Sean Strickland as this guy saying? In my opinion, no, not really, but... Let's see what else he has to say. That's Sport. why you platform it, though, Mike. The people need to hear it. We're all in our silos. We're all speaking to our own people with our own set of facts. This stuff, it can't I just don't need exist. Dan, I will stop you right there. I don't need Sean Strickland <laughs> to let me know that there's hate in this world. I open up Twitter for that. You can always not, I guess, watch Sean Strickland interviews. I don't. I don't. Mike, At a certain point, sports, you got to say, fuck that guy. I think you can still say it, but 
at the same time still allow him to say whatever he wants no and that's fine but that's where the discourse is in this country right now where what could, that could, gets, you don't think that that was saying fuck you to everybody else uh, that's not a discourse was. that's pure hate i think it needs hmm. to see the light it needs to beyond the right. platform there that he's right. on so i guess the stance that dan levitard is taking is although it's horrible and although he may not agree with sean strickland comments this is what it seems like to me that he's basically saying, although it's kind of horrendous and it's kind of bad, according to him, that it should still be allowed, I guess is what he's saying. Where it's normalized mm -hmm. and it's more acceptable and, because he's speaking to his audience. And we are a guilty party, Dan, that, and we are a guilty party in allowing this conflation of hate and politics. A little $25,000 fine. What if it's just fines that, you know what, anytime Sean Strickland says something this brash, boom, $10,000 fine, $25,000 fine. I don't, I, I think there's two negative outcomes that happens. Fans will be pissed because it's a switch from what the business model essentially is. And two, I don't think Sean Strickland stops. And I think he keeps getting even more and more support. So I, I think it'll be a little bit counterproductive. Although this guy thinks something should be done. Maybe something sort of close to fines or suspended. Mike, that what, is pure hatred. Mike, what Dan is saying, it is hatred. It's disgusting. But what Dan is saying is you can't want. And I, and I read a couple of comments in the chat as far as this video, too. <laughs> a lot of people are calling them soy boys. Politics and sports mixed up, but it'd only be your politics. And I'm telling you. <laughs> That's a good point that if you basically say you can't say what Sean Strickland is saying, then you essentially favor the other side, right? Where I think the UFC, what they're trying to do, and Dana White is basically saying, say what you want. We're not going to get in the middle of it. And I guess there are consequences for that. And that's what this guy wants to be stopped. Telling you. <laughs> I'm not it's not politics. That's a little political. Up until like eight years ago, it wasn't politics. And we've allowed for it to be political. It is not. I know how he votes because we've given license to people to speak like this freely. And when I hear all their political beliefs encapsulated in that, it is not political in nature. Mike, you say, it is you hateful. Say, so who determines what's hateful and what's not? I think that's a slippery slope, right? If you say, you know what, this is hateful, you can't say it. I think it could get a little bit dangerous. And ironically enough, they're in Canada right now where they're getting criticized a lot for what's hateful speech and what's not. And Strickland had the shirt, if you, if you guys remember that said, uh, Strickland made Canada great again. So is this guy maybe proving Sean Strickland's point that people are too soft and that this whole filtering of speech is a bad thing? Essentially, that's what he's asking for right here on this video. But uh, does Sean Strickland have a point? to speak this way freely not in sports we haven't it's only in that sport and that's another good point too it's not like this is happening in baseball basketball football any other sport i believe this is the only sport where you could essentially say what you want and get away with it that it isn't across sports you cannot speak that way true that's not and furthermore i would say that a good deal of mma audience applauds the idea that in their sport... That's another thing, that in this sport, I think there are many fans of the UFC that would prefer, not only that they don't care, that they would prefer or even agree with Sean Strickland. I wonder what percentage of fans would uh, lean more towards Sean Strickland, but it seems like there's plenty, maybe more than 50%, I would say. He can speak his mind that way in a way that his audience doesn't necessarily disagree with him. They'll probably lose a lot of followers, a lot of pay-per-view buys if you start uh, filtering speech, at least in the UFC. Hateful or not. And so as, as a principle, because you've done this before with Colby Covington, yes, uh, they, what Tony just said at the end of that break, it is part of how you sell fights in the gutter. Boxing has always trafficked in the race stuff, and this is the natural evolution of the sport that has replaced boxing. Boxing has always had that, right? Thanks. It is part of what is used for profit in that sport. But what is your solution? Since the early Joe Lewis days and even before that, right, where he was supposed to beat the Great White Hope and Jack Johnson was the first black heavyweight champion. Race has always been a part of fight sports. And this drama, this whole political tension has always been a part of fight sports. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, because I, because I ignore it in my everyday life. I, I, I ignore it. I ignore it. I get bullshit on social media. I either block it, mute it. So why not ignore it here? Mute it. I can ignore it because I don't want that infecting my life.
Ooh, and we have an interesting debate. I haven't, I honestly haven't even watched the rest of this. So I'm, so I'm curious to see how they debate this topic where he's basically saying the guy on the right, listen, anger like this, that sparks change. And I guess the guy on the bottom left says, no, I guess he thinks otherwise. Let's see what he says. In fact, Dan, normalizing that kind of behavior and platforming it has brought about a change. That's not a change normal. where someone can speak like that freely. That's the change that has happened. I don't know if I necessarily agree with this guy. I mean, I, I think we're headed more towards a culture where you get fined for things you say and maybe fr freedom of speech is being restricted a little bit more than it was back then. And I think it's pretty obvious, right? In culture, at least right now, there's certain words you can't say where back then it was okay. And you see more and more restrictions as years go by. So I don't know. And if you look at the story of how he's progressed being knocked out two years ago to now being the champion, like his... Nobody expected Sean Strickland to be here um, today as far as a champion and now defending his belt. And I picked Drinkers to win. Imagine Sean Strickland actually beats Drinkers as well, too, and gets a title defense. In Octagon stuff is amazing. His turnaround is amazing. But that is garbage the, of the highest order. The fact that it's a publicly traded company and they can just keep going by. So we should be able to limit speech because it's a publicly traded company is what this guy's saying? I mean, I, I don't know. I guess every company should be able to do what they want. And if the UFC says, listen, you can say what you want, I think that's okay. It almost seems like he wants to force the UFC to do something. Maybe that's because they're under the ESPN banner and he's saying ESPN should do something about it, where I still disagree. Because they have a cult of personality at the head of it in Dana White because he's never been had to be accountable. And anytime he is held accountable, he rebuffs it because, hell, he's speaking before Donald Trump at the RNC. That is bullshit. That we allow that. So what should happen? Go on strike, I guess? Or I, I don't, I just don't see what kind of solution this guy's offering. And we should. I asked Jimmy Pataro, what are you, what gonads are you going to show me in this instance? Because that pay-per-view is on ESPN+. Plus. And maybe that's what he wants to see. Because it's on ESPN+, Plus, something should happen. Who the hell is Jimmy Pataro? Let's look it up real quick. Jimmy Pataro was named chairman ESPN in February 2023. So I guess he wants a chairman of ESPN to do something about it. And he asked him, what kind of gonads does he have? Interesting. I wonder if we that got a response That is on ESPN+. Plus. And I know Disney is an inclusive company I worked for. It. You, you say nothing? You know what? You were right, Dan. I'll walk it back. While the UFC isn't going to do anything about it, I would challenge ESPN to make a public There's a challenge. statement on this. So that's what he wants, a public statement from ESPN to say, um, and I could see them saying, you know what? We disagree with what Sean Strickland has said vehemently. However, we give them the freedom of speech to say whatever they want, whenever they want, although we don't agree and we stand and we are an ally to the LGBTQ community. I could see maybe a statement like that. And will that suffice this gentleman right here? I doubt it, but we'll see if we get something out of it. Because that kind of hate is going over their airway. You have that guy's last name on a pay-per-view. At the very least, condemn it. And he gave us a minimum. If they condemn it, he might be even happy about it. So that appears to be it as far as UFC 297 and their response and the whole Sean Strickland thing. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think? Do you guys think ESPN should make a public announcement? Should say, you know what? Um, we want to see repercussion from Dana White towards Sean Strickland. Or is this guy being a little bit too emotional? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you Saturday for the live commentary. Peace.